a scion of many worlds. Four days, I am gone four days, and you go from training yourself and others to recruiting an army, besting a knight in battle and declaring war upon the Miru Queendom, Lady Ailur says, pinching all four of her eyes shut as her tail twitched. I know you saw war as inevitable, but did you have to go out of your way to cause one? All I did was offer the desperate and hungry food and shelter. Then an army of butchers descended towards them with cruel intent. Was I supposed to stand aside and allow a slaughter? Jasper returns and she sighs. This would have been much easier to deal with if you were just some kill-crazy mutant lunatic. Not an honest part of a star-born people actively seeking out our most ancient history to give it back to us. She groans to herself. So I take it the news is good from the Grand Midwives. Good for you, complicated and frustrating for us. When we spoke with your officer on the other end of the Ray D. O. She deliberately sounds out the unfamiliar word to get it right. Jasper's smirk is small enough to be hidden behind his facial fur. They helped us by granting a lot of old information. Every question we asked from our oldest records was answered perfectly. They even helped us fix some things, clarify others, and give context that we've lost in the long years between now and the crash. She huffs and gives him an odd look with all four eyes. You spoke with nothing but truth. Now promises I once thought impossible have been made. All well-educated midwives, be they martial like myself or the more typical members of our order, we all know we came from the heavens and fell to Lacron losing much. We know the great ship was lost in the deepest ocean and only some few of us survived with precious little. It was our order that stepped up and filled in an impossible gulf to ensure there would be another day. We knew that our work is righteous, generous, and needed. Yet now, soon, soon it will be unneeded. More men will be brought to this world, a stable amount. Jasper says nothing. She needs to talk at him more than with him, it seems. The world is about to change, forever. For better or worse, who can say? But it's changing away from everything I've dedicated my life to. Everything many thousands of good, honest women have dedicated their lives to. We can't even stop it. Even if you were to drop dead and be forgotten in an instant by everyone upon Lacran, then your people would still know where we are. It is one of the few true secrets we retained, untouched by time. They confirm the coordinates. She rants softly and Jasper wonders at the oddity of her sounding out radio but easily breezing by coordinates. He supposes with a hefty flying population geographical coordinates would be a science fairly well retained or relearned. Care to hear some advice? Or do you need to keep going? He asks and she just stares at him for a moment, then gives him a little wave to continue. You have a lot more options than you think. The galaxy is a huge place. There will always be a need for someone willing to help someone else. In the end, is that not what the grand midwives are? Those that stood up and kept everything standing when no one else could? That kind of courage and compassion is never unwelcome. You have a place, of that you must have no doubt. If it's not here on Lochran, then it's out there somewhere. He finishes gesturing upward towards the darkening night sky. She snorts in amusement before chuckling a little. Exactly the sort of answer one expects from a star seeker. She mocks him slightly. Am I wrong? He asks, and she shakes her head. No, I suppose not. Would you like to know what plans my order has made so far? Yes, I... Boring! Come on, I'm burning here. You can't light me up and then ignore me. Magrika complained, standing on his shoulders and grabbing his antenna and giving them a yank. Jasper lets out a yop of surprise as his antenna being yanked makes his entire body sort of jerk in a way that he's never even imagined possible. What are you even doing? Lady Elur asks in a scandalous tone while the tiny Metag calls out for someone to make it rain so she can get fucked. Jasper has to run Axiom through his antenna and pry Magrika off his shoulders and head. Just be patient. The more I know, the... 
She can tell us while we party. Come on. You spilled rivers of blood and fought powerful knights. You're ready to face all of Lacrin in battle if you need to. Let's get busy. Magrika cheers and Lady Aelur begins to say something before cutting herself off. Oh, now what? Um, I've done some reading. About? Magrika asks, her mind already rushing towards a very interesting conclusion. What is sex? She asks, and Magrika pauses before chuckling. I see I'm going to need to draw on even more axioms soon. Jasper notes as Magrika's laugh turns throaty as she clearly has ideas running through her head. It's mating, isn't it? It's how you create a child without ritual, isn't it? No need for the goblet of blood. No need for a circle of sisters to come together and focus. Just a man and a woman, Lady Aelur says, and Magrika's just grinning at her now. Hey, big guy. Oh, no. I say we bring her in. See if you can make the four eyes squeal like I did. Magrika gushes. You know what? I don't care. Let's just get you good and bothered so you can... He cuts her off by throwing the miniature deviant over his shoulder and starting to leave. Excuse us, I have a short woman to calm down. With my penis. Just wow. Want to join in? Magrika offers Lady Aelur and Jasper pauses before glancing to Lady Aelur and his eyebrows visibly go up. Oh my god, she's actually thinking about it, Jasper remarks with a rueful chuckle. Is something wrong? Culture clash, nothing more, he remarks and she looks at him oddly. Surely you and your people question the communication officers about the origins of the Undawn. No more talking. Magrika want moi moi, the tiny monster hunter proclaims, and Jasper looks dumbfounded. The moi moi, oh my god, no more talking. We're going into the baths and I'm using the trick I forced out of the water girls to make you stand good and tall. You coming, Feathers? Magrika demands. I'd like to, Lady Aelur begins, and Magrika lets out a little cheer before warping her wings to knock Jasper off balance and then zip to the floor so she can catch him in her wings and hold him over her head like a prize. Really? Yes, really, to the baths. I'm showing Feathers how to get a baby in the belly without the woo-woo weirdness of the midwives, Magrika announces before running off with her prize who's wavering between amused and exasperated. I'm literally getting dragged into a possible threesome with a midget and a militant nun. Wow, Jasper says before breaking down into giggles as he goes limp. Dear Penthouse Forum, you would not believe what happened to me. She literally carries him into a bathing chamber with a curious Lady A. Lure following. So can I take off my clothing and armor or are you going to be peeling me out? Oh, that's a great idea, Magrika says, as she sets Jasper to the side, standing up before gathering Axiom into her hands, making it visible, and then fastball pitching it into the river. Immediately, a mist kicks up and Jasper's electromagnetic sensing dulls down to nearly nothingness. No clear enemy in his sight, but his heartbeat increases and he huffs out a breath of air that's much warmer. The room is small enough that he can make out Magrika all but shucking off her clothing and effectively charging him, even as he places his swords to the side and takes off his weapon belt so that a moment of distraction doesn't cause the large blades to detonate out of the two small sheaths when his focus is no doubt broken. Come on, get naked and help me unpeel the fluffy treat. Magrika cheers as she goes at the class keeping his greaves up and the thump of his armor hitting the ground is echoed around Lady Ilure whose chain mail and breastplate hit the floor. You know, this would go a fair bit quicker if... Shut up and let me have my fun. Front and center feathers. Magrika cuts him off as his shin guards are tossed to the side and she jumps up to try and drag down his pants beneath the greaves. He only had to get pinched in heavy armor by the crotch fur once for cloth, underlining to be a number one priority with all his armor. If you take off his gambeson first, then... Oh... Oh my, Lady Aelur says, now fully naked as she steps around behind him to unclasp a few buckles from his chest armor. 
Don't tell me how to fuck my man, Magrika exclaims as Jasper both tries to keep himself under control and let Magrika have her fun. I've done my research, little savage. I know several methods to please a man. Research means nothing without actual experience. This is really happening, huh? I've literally caught a cannonball and this is what I'm blue screening on. Okay then. What? Lady Alure asks as she slips off his protective vest and he sighs. It's a kind of, you know what? Now is not the time to explain such things. Let's see how you taste, Jasper says, using a flutter of his wing to herd Lady Alure to the side, sweeping her up in his arms, picking her off the ground and kissing her deeply, his proboscis wrapping around her tongue as he uses a touch of axiom to stop the needles he has for teeth from hurting her. At first, her wings fare out in shock before smoothing as she leans into the kiss with a bit of a moan. A kiss. I mean... They use it to greet in the West, but he kisses her again and she seems to lose focus and wraps her hands around the back of his head. Ha! Got it, Magrika says, peeling down his pants. Really? You've got a loincloth on under this? It's underwear. The family jewels are important. Keep them covered. Jasper remarks after breaking away from Lady Alur, who's looking at him with a smoky, desiring gaze. Why did that feel so good? She mutters, leaning into him, and he chuckles. I'm adding more and more of my original race. This bit hasn't fully kicked in yet. It will take a while for it to really feel good, Jasper says. Really? When humans come to this world, there will be a glut of desire and affection. I am gaining more human traits, and one of which is that humans are always in season. Eventually, we won't need the mist. Good. Magrika says as she literally climbs him like a tree and looks at Lady Aelor right in the eyes. Now move it. I want my huggy moth humping. Lady Aelor takes a step back and holds up Jasper's arm before slowly taking off the gauntlet and she smirks at the sight of it. Isn't this made out of the weapon of one of my sisters? I believe so. It's good metal. No point wasting it. Jasper says as his eyes rake over her figure as his hormones begin to really boil. The mist in the room cannot compare to the deluges he was trapped in. It's more a slow burn than the explosion going off in his mind and loins that the storms were. Thank you. They're refined in some of the hottest forges on Lacron. Flame Arumenta exclusively work the metal so it can be molded properly while still pliable. Lady Ilur says as she peels off his second gauntlet and then Magrika all but rips the gambeson off his torso to leave him completely naked. Now the fun begins, watch and learn feathers, Magrika says, latching on even harder onto Jasper and pulling them both against the wall with her wings.